Okay, welcome back. We're probably going to finish Galatians, believe it or not. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 13. Uh, this is what we finished off last time. Paul said, For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. Isn't this a silly thing? You think about it. These guys were so, you know, gung-ho about getting as many people circumcised because that was like, you know, they could chalk one up for, for, for their team. And Paul sees it as a complete threat to the gospel of Jesus Christ because people are trusting in a little minor surgery rather than the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death on the cross, which is what the gospel's really all about. But these guys were preaching it, like Paul said, you know, and like Jesus also mentioned about the Pharisees, you guys focus on the small little things and you ignore the big things. And that's what these guys were doing too. Everything's about circumcision. So if we get to circumcise, bingo, everything's okay now. But they're not even keeping the law themselves because there were 600 and some odd laws in the law of Moses and there was some that were a lot more important and a lot more weighty than the minor surgery that uh, is prescribed through circumcision. You got it, you got it, okay? Again, we can tell this is a summarizing section now. He's just winding it down. And so Paul says in verse 14, a very famous verse, but may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that your boast? Are you, are you saying that's why I'm on the road to eternal life because Jesus arrested me. I, I heard his gospel. I repented. I believe in him. I still believe in him. I'm seeking to obey him because now he lives in me and I've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm boasting in the cross of Jesus Christ. And then he says, that cross through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Once again there you see the identification that he and we have with the cross of Christ, have with Jesus. He's in us, we were in him. God accounted his sufferings to our credit and that's how we've been made righteous. And so when Jesus died, I died. That's what it represents when I'm baptized. I'm dying. When I come out of the water, I'm a resurrected new creation in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, and so the world died to me at that point in time, and I died to the world. I'm a new person. I'm no longer in the darkness. I'm no longer walking after the course of this world and following what they're all into, the world, the flesh, the devil. I'm into Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. And then another summarizing statement in verse number 15, for neither is circumcision anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And I can't say it any better than that, but that is the summary of the entire book of Galatians. If I was going to pick out one verse, I think I'd pick out that one if I had to pick out one verse that summarizes the whole book. And you can see, as I've said before, in one sense, how irrelevant this book is to modern Christians. No one's teaching us that we have to be circumcised in order to gain eternal life. But when people take that message and say, well, it's the same thing when, when someone says you, you can't commit adultery and have eternal life and you can't uh, lie or steal or, or many other things that scripture forbids us from doing and get eternal life. Uh, when, they, when they make that the equivalent of what Paul is saying, that's a complete misrepresentation of the truth because Paul himself, the man who wrote this, also wrote that those who follow after the flesh will not inherit eternal life. So, Verse number 16, and, for, and, and those who will walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. And that's another indication, as we, he said before, you know, the sons of Abraham, the true uh, heirs of the promise through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not the phine, uh, physical descendants or the physical lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just because you can trace yourself back, that's, that's not your ticket to eternal life. It's those who have believed in Christ and have gotten into Christ, and therefore, he who was the seed of Abraham, they're a part of that seed of Abraham, and they are heirs according to the promise, and they are, as he said, the, the Israel of God. We are truly the heirs of the promise. Hallelujah. Okay, so again, all these last four or five sentences in Galatians are reiteration of themes that Paul has gone over over and over and over and over again. I mean, if you haven't got the message, if his contemporary readers didn't get the message, they were D-U-M dumb. 
that dumb. They couldn't even spell dumb. Hide. That's what we're so, how we're supposed to be walking. Are you a new creation in Christ Jesus? This is not religion. This is birth. This is not religion. This is a resurrection. Amen. This is not religion. This is family. This is spirit. This is life. This is eternal life. You know, this is great. And, and you just feel so sorry for people that back in that day who believed that circumcision was a ticket and people today who think something similar like, well, I joined the church when I was 12 and I'm on the rolls. Or I built a, you know, a wing onto that church or that hospital, so surely God will credit all that for me. Or, or I was baptized. You know, all these things that people say, but they have no relationship. They're not new creations in Christ Jesus. I love this, this, these final two verses of Galatians. Paul writes in verse number 17, From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. That is, I've suffered for this message, and I can show you the scars. Remember, when I was with you guys, they stoned me and left me for dead. I can still show you the scars, the marks on my body from that, and many other things. I've, been, I've received from the Jews 39 lashes one time, he writes the Corinthians, five times. This guy has scars across his back for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent and believe in him. And so, of course, this man is a champion of the gospel and would be against this nonsense of circumcision is your ticket. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. With that, I'll say amen, and I'll say see you next time as we jump back into Acts of all places. It's going to be great. See you then. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.